Hi everybody, Matt Frank here. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, Chris is gonna make some big announcements and the Blackthorn team is diving into the functionality of our new features and products, all of which are really exciting and will make the lives of our customers and your stakeholders that much easier. And it's with that focus that I wanted to provide you with a bit of context as to how these releases relate to two of our core industries, nonprofit and education. Now, every industry is being stretched to do more with fewer resources. And with the rise of remote learning or remote working, making an impact can be that much harder to do with technologies designed for a physically present and location-centered world. So we've worked with individuals and organizations to understand how our apps can better support you through these changes. And this results in updates to our events app, like a new event builder and a front end UI designed not only to be eye-catching for those joining a virtual or hybrid conference, but who's getting out into the world to go to events for the first time in a few years. But it's also easier to use and dynamically responsive to the staff who are using it, allowing them to spend a lot less time on their technology and a lot more time on stakeholder engagement and impact. Communications are changing as well. And with the release of our smart scheduler, we're incorporating not only automation, but also the most impactful communication style for donors and learners, SMS. And there are some great Salesforce and industry white papers supporting texting as the most direct way to ensure that your message is received. And we're here to support you in that. Not only are communications moving to mobile, but so is giving, both in the education and nonprofit spaces. And we don't just mean giving through mobile devices, although our virtual terminal lightning web component can really help you do that as Salesforce's Elevate product is retiring, but we're talking geographically mobile as well. Advancement agents are doing more in the field than at home, and trends surrounding donations at field events show a much higher relative return than those collected at HQ. Mobile payments, both online and offline, that take the easiest, most frictionless methods possible, that tap to pay, can really help support that. And as the world of higher education continues to grapple with a decade plus long trend in declining enrollment, we're seeing a surge in professional certification and non-degree program enrollment and those programs being offered by nonprofits, industry or professional associations, and yes, even colleges and universities. So we developed a new app to support these new ways of learning. So behind the scenes, we're not only looking at the technical aspects of supporting our global nonprofit and education customers, but we're diving deep into the needs of the industries and communities that they serve to ensure that the people who do good can do it well. Thanks so much. Hi, my name is Andrea and I'm the Director of Product here at Blackthorn, and I'm excited to kick off this segment where members of our product team will showcase highlights of key new features and functionality that are available with our August release in action. So let's get started with all things new and events. One of our guiding principles here at Blackthorn is the software shouldn't require instructions or documentation. And that's been top of mind with the design of our new event builder. So this is a reboot of our event wizard functionality with support for even more event objects and built from the ground up for a better and more intuitive user experience for event planners and event organizers. It features inline building so event organizers can visualize the output of their work inside the builder in real time as they build their event. Here is events product manager Katie to introduce you to our new event builder. Hey everybody. We're gonna start by building an event. Meet Sammy Staffer. He's planning Blackthorn University's annual career fair for students and alumni. Sammy is new to Salesforce, but with the event builder, he can easily build an event. First, he enters basic information about it. Then he opens up the landing page, an inline builder where he can watch his event take shape. He edits the hero section to add an inviting banner image. He then toggles on the gradient to add a little extra pizzazz and the event is coming to life. Look how easy it is for Sammy to jump between sections to add, edit, and remove elements. Sammy goes to create separate tickets for alumni and students. Back on the landing page, he sees that the layout has automatically adjusted to accommodate multiple tickets. Sammy sees he can also add a sponsor, Blackthorn University's Business School. He then adds a couple of FAQs and a map of campus to orient alumni who haven't been back in a while. Sammy saves his work and can immediately see that the event record plus several related records have been created. Hi, I'm Katie Campbell, Director of Product at Blackthorn. I'm excited to show you our new dynamic UI. 
Meet Amy Alumna. She is job hunting and just learned that her alma mater is hosting a career fair. She opens up the event website to check it out. Amy is impressed by the contemporary look and feel of the website, which is built using dynamic UI. She uses the navigation bar to jump down to the ticket section first. Her unemployment budget is tight, so she is relieved to see that alumni admission is free thanks to some generous sponsors. Amy browses the speakers. It looks like Alex Walker will be talking about building a strong online presence and also conducting an interview masterclass. Then Amy explores the sessions. She sees two featured sessions that she will definitely be adding to her agenda. Then she reviews the full list of sessions. It looks like the fair will be action packed. Take a look at how easy it is for Amy to explore the event without navigating different pages and tabs. She skims some helpful job seeker FAQ and makes note of the venue location. Finally, Amy sees the list of the many exhibitors who will attend the fair. She's excited about the doors this event could open for her. Amy selects an alumni ticket and then registers for a few sessions. After registering for the event, Amy needs to prepare for the career fair. While she is out and about, she pulls up the event website on her phone so she can easily remind herself who she may meet at the event. Again, she is able to easily navigate the site and find all the details she is looking for. Meet Bobby Business Owner. Bobby is excited to sponsor the career fair again this year. They always meet bright and accomplished applicants for their open positions. Bobby registers for a gold level sponsorship from the event website. When they pay for the booth, they see that the payment method will affect the total cost they can easily toggle between payment methods to make the decision. Bobby decides to collect the credit card points and completes the checkout. The credit card fee shows up on the receipt and the paid invoice as well. Bobby is happy with the transparency from the university and the university is happy to pass on those fees to keep their costs down. Sammy Staffer is ready to set up an email reminder to everyone who registered for Blackthorne University's annual career fair using Smart Scheduler. From the event scheduler component, Sammy will select scheduling an email to event attendees in the recipient section. This can also be set up to send to session attendees. Sammy then gives the schedule a name, defines an a from email address and a to email address. He then selects the attendee filter of registration status, since that's the population that he wants to filter on. Sammy then selects registered from the list of registration statuses. Next, Sammy then looks at when to schedule the send. The university standard for reminder emails is three days before an event. So instead of defining a specific date and time, Sammy selects three days before the event start date. He then looks at what email he wants to send and selects the standard reminder light email. Finally, Sammy schedules the send. Then from the event scheduler component, he can see the list of scheduled sends. Using Global Scheduler, users can leverage the flexibility of Smart Scheduler for even more use cases outside of events. Let's say Sammy Staffer wants to send a scheduled email to everyone who responded yes to the networking event custom question that we set up earlier in Storefront. First, we'll navigate to the Smart Scheduler Admin tab. Then Sammy will pick messages on the left to view the global scheduler. Here's where we'll see all of our currently scheduled global scheduler sends, and we'll set up a new send now. Then we'll click whether we want to do an SMS or an email. In this case, we'll choose email. Then we'll pick the base object, which in this case will be the BT form submission object. And then we'll choose the related object, which will be the BT form submission answer object. That's where the answers to our custom questions will land in the internal Salesforce object structure. Then we'll give our schedule a name. And then we'll choose the to email and the from email for our global scheduler send. For the to email, we'll just choose the contacts email, which we can get by going to the form submission and then to the related contact, and then finally the contact email field. Next, we'll choose where the activities and tasks will be associated in Salesforce. In this case, we'll just leave it associated with the contact. And then we'll choose the criteria for the form submission and the form submission answer records. 
For the form submission, we really just wanna make sure that it's associated with the correct form. So in this case, we'll choose the form that we set up specifically for the networking event custom question. And we'll just choose the name of that form. So that'll be BT University form in our case here. Then for the answer records, we'll make sure that we're only sending people emails that responded yes to that custom question. So we'll just choose that question's criteria as yes. After we've done so, we can see that the total recipients updates at the bottom to so only form submission answers that have responded yes to this custom question. So we're sure now that we're only sending to people that have indicated they're interested in the event. We'll click next here, and then we can choose when to send our scheduled email. So we have three options. One is a particular date and time. One is now for a one-off send immediately. And then in the middle, there's the option to set up a schedule. In this case, we'll want to send the email and maybe an hour after one of these form submissions comes through. So we'll choose one hour after the created date. Then we'll pick our email template. In this case, we've already set up a pre-configured template for the scheduled send. Then we'll click next. And then we have the opportunity to schedule a test send to make sure that all of our merge fields are set up correctly. Once we're happy with our scheduled send here, we'll click schedule. And then we can view the schedule send screen here, which shows that we've set up an active schedule. Now, whenever someone responds yes to that custom question and completes checkout, they'll get a confirmation email about an hour afterwards, sending them the details of the networking event. Hi, my name is Michael McDonald, and I'm a sales engineer here at Blackthorn. We have already seen how Blackthorn Payments is the backbone of event registration, allowing us to collect payment during an event checkout or send an invoice at a later date. But Blackthorn Payments is an entire solution all on its own. It allows for the collection of payments right out of Salesforce. From sending an invoice, creating a recurring payment schedule, collecting payments or donations from within a community, or collecting a transaction on your mobile device. With the Blackthorn Mobile Payments app, we can facilitate field donations, sponsorships and exhibition fees for a conference, and it even works with Salesforce field service. When it's a technician is out in the field, they can add parts and work order line items that roll up into Blackthorn's transaction object, allowing for quick and easy payments to be made in the field. Taking payment in the field is not always easy due to connectivity problems or the batteries of hardware dying after long days. Blackthorn has addressed these two issues by adding tap to pay with iPhone, requiring no additional hardware and enabling techs to take payments even when they have poor or no service. We are going to see a few of these in action with our product team. Hi, I'm Mauricio, product manager for payments here at Blackthorn. I'm extremely excited to show you a couple of the latest features in our mobile payments app. But before I do, I wanted to take a moment to introduce Field Service Mobile for anyone who isn't familiar with it. Field Service Mobile is an incredibly powerful tool used by field engineers. It's a mobile app that allows you real-time access to your Salesforce data, even if you lose internet connection. This means you can extend the power of Salesforce into the hands of those out on the field and therefore improve efficiency, productivity, and of course, customer satisfaction. I will now like to play the role of a field engineer and we're going to follow along as I use field service to manage my work. We'll also learn how Blackthorn Mobile Payments further extends my capabilities to effortlessly take payments on the spot using only a mobile device. So I'm going to start my day by checking the inventory of products stored in my vehicle and any notifications that may be of interest to me. I'll now review my schedule and see an upcoming service appointment. So I open it to get more information and see that luckily I'm only two minutes away and I can even get driving directions directly on the app. On the details tab, I'm able to see further information about the work order itself. In this particular case, I'm scheduled to perform a pipe repair and installation service. On the related tab, I can see other information related to this order, including details and quantity information of a product that has been determined to be required. 
Let's now imagine I have completed the work and as part of this, I use some additional products from my inventory. So I'll add those products to our work order and confirm the quantity use. Now that I've completed the work, added products and completed any additional steps, I'm ready to process payment. So I'll launch mobile payments from the actions menu and notice how things like the amount, contact and account have been automatically inherited from our work order. And now onto one of our exciting new features, offline payments. And in order for me to show you this, I'm going to disable Wi-Fi so I can highlight how this feature complements the offline capabilities of Field Service Mobile by allowing me to accept payments using a variety of methods such as cards, cash, or bank details without the need for an active internet connection. I'm going to manually add some card details for our customer and as no active internet connection is currently available, I'm reminded that these details will be saved in local storage and processed once the connection has been restored. From the home screen, I can see a menu that lists the number of pending payments, which currently includes the details I just entered. These would be immediately synced and processed the moment connectivity is restored. But for now, in order to show you another super exciting new feature, I've removed that payment navigate back to field service and restore the internet connection. I'll launch mobile payments again, but this time I'll select tap to pay from the list of available payment methods and watch as my mobile device is almost magically transformed into a contactless payment terminal. I'll now quickly switch perspective and would like you to imagine a customer's experience as we see this in action. The payment is processed, authorized and securely recorded. I'm then able to instantly send the customer an email receipt from our confirmation screen. Wow, what a great interaction. As a reminder, this tap to pay feature, in addition to requiring an active internet connection, is available exclusively for Stripe customers on both Android and iOS. It supports contactless enabled cards, as well as mobile wallets, such as Apple Pay and Google Pay, running on a variety of devices. So in summary, together, Field Service and Blackthorn Mobile Payments provide field engineers with an unparalleled toolkit, enabling them to not only manage on-site jobs efficiently, but also effortlessly take payments on the go from their mobile devices without the need for any additional hardware and even without an internet connection. Thank you for watching. Hi again. I'm now super excited to talk to you about the Blackthorn Virtual Terminal, because as an admin, I can simply drag and drop the terminal wherever I need it. I can configure a lot of the appearance and the behavior to adapt the terminal in a multitude of ways to meet various requirements, while still providing a customized user experience everywhere I'd like to use the terminal as part of my payment process. Now, some of you may already be familiar with the existing terminal, however, this enhanced version is built using the Lightning Web Component Framework, meaning it can be used across a much wider range of Salesforce products. So today, I'll be showing you four short demos that will highlight the flexibility and the configurability of the Blackthorn Virtual Terminal. For our first demo, follow along as we use the terminal that has been placed on a contact record page and has been configured using the settings and data mapping features to function as a simple, user-friendly way of capturing and safely storing payment details. As we can see, the action on this terminal has been defaulted to new payment method. We also see data mapping in action by automatically associating the payment method being created to our contact, Rose Gonzalez, SVP at Edge Communications. We can configure the terminal to allow you to enter both credit card details as well as bank details which are validated for things like card expiry dates as well as required fields. We can also use the terminal to set this as the default payment method for rows, which should help us process payments faster next time by allowing us to use these stored payment details, all of which are securely encrypted, sent to your chosen payment gateway, and then stored in Salesforce as a secure tokenized version. For our second demo, 
We'll be using the terminal, this time embedded into a screen flow and launch with the click of a button to guide us through the process of paying an invoice. By navigating to the related tab, we can see that there are currently two invoices with the status of unpaid. We're also able to see our contact, Rose, listed as one of the contacts on this account. Great, we can save time since we already have a payment detail stored. Now flows have to be my absolute favorite Salesforce feature. In this screen flow, we can see how I'm able to present the user with a customized summary screen, automatically filling in data, as well as allowing them to make choices, such as selecting which invoice they would like to pay. On this next screen, we can see how the virtual terminal embedded in this flow interacts with the information as well as the choices the user makes throughout the flow, such as the amount and description fields. Now watch as the user navigates back, changes their choice, and the terminal is dynamically updated. I would now like to talk, quickly talk to you about the process types we support. We have Capture Now, which allows you to take the payment now. We have Auto Process, which allows you to schedule a payment to be processed on a specific date. And we have Authorize, which allows you to place a hold on the amount for it to be charged later. For this demo, let's take the payment now and watch as the invoice we selected is now showing us paid and the transaction for that paid amount has been created to record this payment in Salesforce. So you can rest assured all your payment information is easily accessible and reportable. For our third demo, we use in the terminal in a public community site for Blackburn University. Now, public community sites function just like any other website on the internet. So Blackburn University have recently launched a donation campaign and would like to give anyone the ability to donate via this site. For this scenario, we're using the light mode feature of the terminal, which just like in the other demos, gives you the option to pay using either card or bank details, but this time requiring you to manually enter all of the required fields, including additional address information, all of which again is validated as it's being entered. We also see the description and amount fields have been pre-populated, but in this case, we still give the user the option to amend the amount and successfully process the donation. For our final demo, I would like to show you how the terminal can even be used by fully mobile employees from within the Salesforce Field Service Lightning app. Our user has completed a work order, has added products consumed, and currently has an open transaction that shows the amount due for the work carried out is $350. So we'll launch the terminal from the Actions menu. We can see how our data mapping feature has already filled in most of the information and the terminal gives us access to stored payment details as well as creating new ones. So you can use the terminal to add payment details, process payments on the spot safely and securely, remaining 100% on the field. I'd like to remind you that all of the demos you've seen today can be configured in just minutes and with just a few simple clicks. I hope you're as excited about this terminal as I am after seeing it in action. Thank you for watching. Hey everybody, Matt Frank here again. I'm excited to tell you a bit about the newest app in the Blackthorn engagement suite, Blackthorn Storefront. It's our new e-commerce app that seamlessly incorporates online shops or storefronts uh, with your Salesforce CRM, providing that tailored customer shopping experience that your stakeholders are looking for. With this new app, organizations can easily manage one or more online stores configured for different buying audiences to purchase digital goods and digital services offered by your school or organization. And after speaking with educational and nonprofit organizations, both using Salesforce and more broadly throughout the Salesforce ecosystem, we discovered there was a real need for a simple e-commerce style app with a streamlined object structure to sell things like continuing education courses and professional education courses, community education classes, open courses, non-degree certifications, and donation or fund stores for charitable giving. And all of this without the complexity of apps that are really designed for more physical inventoried goods with warehousing and shipping requirements that bog down the architecture. Storefront was designed to fit into any Salesforce environment, no matter how complex. So it's data architecture agnostic, and that allows it to work across industries, clouds, and account structures pretty seamlessly while fitting into your organization's unique business structure and automation. Additionally, 
The app enables organizations to personalize the shopping experience for their customers by connecting it with the communications coming from their CRM integrated marketing technologies like Marketing Cloud or Account Engagement, which used to be called Pardot and other Blackthorn technologies like messaging, which can be easily added into your tech stack. So let's see it in action as we click, connect, purchase, and engage with Blackthorn Storefront. Storefront has everything you could want out of a digital store hosted on Salesforce. The design is simple yet elegant making it as easy as possible for you to list both courses and other digital items for sale and easy for your users to browse and purchase those items. The homepage features the ability to see featured products, search for a particular term, and browse items via what we're calling keywords in the nav bar. The featured section of the homepage allows you to show users the most important items for sale front and center. When setting up your store, you'll also have the ability to add custom links to link back to your website or important notices such as your terms and conditions or GDPR notifications. The theme for your store is up to you, with Storefront launching with the ability to configure logos, store images, and colors, and more on the way soon after launch. Once a user has selected the store product to view in more detail, they are shown the store product detail screen showing them everything they need to know about the particular course or other digital item they've selected. All of the text on this page is configurable. In our example of this MBA Smart Start course, we configured the detail page to tell users what the course is about, what to expect in the curriculum, the dates it'll be available, and when it'll occur. Once our prospective student Amy has decided she is interested in purchasing the course, this is where the next important component we built for Blackthorn Storefront comes into play, the ability to place custom forms onto your store. Forms allow you to ask your users questions before purchasing, allowing you to gather crucial information about the person purchasing the particular course or whomever they're purchasing on behalf of. Amy's responses to these questions will be captured in Salesforce and associated with her purchase, as well as her account and contact records. So the data captured here is actionable and able to be reported on. Amy will answer yes that she is interested in the networking event after the course is concluded, as well as providing a dietary preference. When she's done, she'll click add to cart and you'll notice the cart pop up in the top right corner. With Storefront, we've built an e-commerce experience expecting that users may want to purchase multiple items at the same time or purchase items on behalf of someone else such as an office manager purchasing a leadership course for an entire management team. Once Amy's ready to check out, she'll click check out and be brought to the pre-checkout page. This page collects the recipient and billing information for the purchase and provides the ability to mark these as two separate people. Amy can also provide a promo code for a 10% off coupon that she might have received from a marketing cloud or Pardot email campaign, or that she got from an in-person event she attended via Blackthorn events. After she's done this, and when she's ready to purchase, she'll click continue to payment. Once she's done so, Amy will seamlessly be taken to one of the most important things we have built for Storefront, the new Blackthorn checkout. Blackthorn Checkout is the smoothest and most flexible checkout solution we've built to date, and soon it'll be coming to the entire Blackthorn product suite. Entering payment information is quick and easy, and it will support multiple payment gateways at launch, including Stripe, Authorize.net, Spreedly, and CashNet. Once Amy's entered her card number, expiration, CVC, and zip code, she'll click Submit Payment, and then she'll be taken to a confirmation screen and she'll get a receipt email in her inbox. On the internal side of things, Amy's payment info and custom form responses have come across automatically. A Blackthorn transaction and invoice are created in the system and Amy's existing contact and account records are automatically associated with these records. Amy's form response answers for the custom questions she answered are recorded as well, and those are associated with the invoice.
Everything happens automatically for as little human intervention needed as possible. On the internal side, Sammy Staffer can now work with his implementation partner to build reporting and analytics for storefront purchases and form responses. They can also connect purchases and contact info back to the learning management system for delivering course content. 